Okay, today we'll talk about the screw modifier, and the screw modifier can do two things. First, it can do a lathe, and it can do a screw, even though it's just called screw. And if I insert a circle here, press F6, and change this down to 8 for computing time, then go into top view, and move this over. And I can also scale it down a little, and um, rotate it 90 degrees, and go back into front view. So I'll add the screw modifier, and you can see it creates a torus. And the reason why there is black faces, you probably know this already, but if you have a smooth object and the normals are wrong, you get these black lines that are, can be really annoying, and if you uh, enable calculate order, that usually gets rid of that problem. Now we have a ring, but we do want to screw this ring. That sounds weird. Well, anyways, we turn this ring into a screw. That sounds a little more, I don't know, a little more um, diplomatic. So, you can see that this is actually starting to be a helix. If I increase the screw value, you can, well, you can see what it happened, what it does. And if I increase the iterations, then it repeats this action that is, um, that is, um, defined over here, it just repeats this. And uh, one funny thing about this is that I can, for example, I can use, I can do this and then decrease the screw level and I get something that looks like a mechanical screw. Now to my knowledge there is no way that you can um, make this pointy with the screw modifier but uh, so that the um, diameter decreases like that would be in a normal screw, at least in a wood screw. Um, you can do that in Blender, uh, but you can use a lattice modifier, for example. And um, you can, of course, if you're just using this, you can delete these three vertices and you <coughs> have a much cleaner screw. But I'm going to undo this because I want to show you something else. I'm going to move back this, so it's roughly a circle again, and I'm going to press Shift D, and uh, the, uh, making sure that you did not move the um, 3D cursor, press Point, SX minus 1, and you can see it's now two screws, and if we increase this, you can see we have a double helix, like we would have with DNA. Okay, this is quite a lot, but this is working quite nicely. If you want to increase the width of the individual chains, you can select those two and press Alt S. Nope. But you can select individual origins and I guess you can't. Okay. You have to scale them up manually. Okay, I was hoping there was a more elegant method, but apparently there is not. Now, if I press Shift S, curse, uh, it's easier to press Shift G, and now our object is right in the center again. And I'm going to add an empty. We can use this empty as the screw origin. And uh, let's just check; it's called empty. And I'll just enable this. Right now, it is the same as the original origin was, so nothing changed. But if I move this over, you can see that my that um, the object gets distorted, and that is because actually this looks kind of funny, and that is because the um, screwing axis is not the center of the mesh anymore. Okay, that's it for the screw version, but you can also use this um, this modifier as a as a lathe, and uh, just for that's for a lathe and uh, the. You can use it as a lathe, and I'll show you how. I'll add a new plane and go into edit mode and immediately delete those three edges, uh, vertices, sorry. If I now move this up a little and I press E and extrude it over here, you can also control click somewhere, but I think that method is not as precise, so I, I'll use the E version of it, and what I'm doing right now is just 
roughly modeling the outline of a glass, wine glass. Just really quickly, it doesn't have to be too precise. And now I'll select this one and this one. And making sure our cursor is still in the center of the world. Again, press point and then S, X, and 0. And this will make sure that both those vertices are exactly on the Y axis. And that is important. We don't want our glass to get a hole. Again, I'll add the screw modifier. This looks kind of weird. And the uh, reason is we can use the Y axis or we can rotate it 90 degrees. It doesn't matter. You can always go back in to change values of this glass, which is awesome. Uh, you used to not be able to do that. Actually, let's do rotate this 90 degrees. Okay. So this is a fairly decent glass out of a couple of seconds of work, not even a minute, I'd say. And uh, we didn't even have to calculate the order. And um, if you wanted to use this glass as a fluid simulation object, and you notice that the fluid is going right through it, what you want to do is flip the normals because um, then usually if you have the problem with the fluid simulation and something going right through it, it's because the, or the normals are not aligned correctly. So you can use the flip order checkbox. If you want to have more steps in your glass, you can increase this and you can see how the glass gets smoother. And if you want more um, actually, yeah if you want more vertices oh sorry this is the same thing except for this is how many steps get rendered and this is how many steps you get in the preview so um, I guess that's about it about the screw and lathe modifier and uh, yeah stay tuned for the next one it'll be the solidify modifier that's a very important one